Welcome back to the Clean My Space channel. My name is Melissa Maker and I am an accidental cleaning expert, which means that I struggle with the topic of cleaning, but I've been creating cleaning content here on YouTube for the last 11 years. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you 25 of my favorite cleaning tips. Things that you can use to shave time off the amount of time you spend cleaning, things to make you feel a little bit more motivated, and frankly, things to get you better cleaning results. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, and you'll definitely hear me talking about the three-wave cleaning system during this video. And if you'd like to check that out, I've got a link to it down below. Hydrogen peroxide is famous for its ability to whiten, which is why we love using it to clean grout. So a simple recipe for grout cleaning would be two parts baking soda to one part hydrogen peroxide. You can mix that up in a bowl. Remember, you only wanna make up as much as you need to use at that time. You're gonna apply it to your dirty grout with a cleaning toothbrush, let it sit for a few minutes, get that cleaning toothbrush back in action and start scrubbing the grout clean. Then rinse it with a clean cloth a few times. Baking soda tends to leave a little bit of grittiness behind, so you really have to focus on that but your grout is gonna look. You wanna clean AirPods essentially the same way that you clean earbuds. Here is what you'll do. Get yourself a dry cleaning toothbrush and a cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol and maybe a cotton pad. We'll see how advanced we have to get here. Take your ear pod, hold it so that the speaker part is facing down and take your cleaning toothbrush and just gently start brushing to knock out any of the debris. Next, you're gonna take your cotton pad or a cotton bud and you're gonna dip it in some rubbing alcohol. You'll just give the surface a wipe down. This helps break the bond between the wax and the surface and it also, the alcohol is very fast drying, so you don't have to worry about it sinking in to the little speaker part. But make sure it's not a, I know it's not a speaker. I don't know the technical term, but you guys know what I'm talking about, that little grilly part that goes into your ear. Make sure that you don't get too much liquid in there because obviously you don't want to ruin it. That's the beauty of using rubbing alcohol though. A little goes a long way and it won't cause damage. Bathrooms are small spaces, and that means that little messes really add up quickly. So keeping an eye on those small little messes and managing them will help your bathroom stay fresher for longer. A few things that really are problematic, toothpaste. Whether you get splatters on your mirror or chunks in your sink, it looks gross and it compounds. So make sure that you're staying on top of that by wiping your mirror or your sink as it happens. The next thing is soap. If you pump some soap and it gets on the counter or gets onto your sink area and it doesn't quite rinse, you get this cakey kind of buildup and that, because it's sticky, can attract more dirt. So you get these patchy, disgusting spots. Look, I'm talking about all the gross stuff in your bathroom. If you see any, make sure you give it a good rinse just by flicking some water on it and getting it down your sink. And then things like makeup and ladies, if you have long hair, oh my gosh, that gets everywhere. So make sure that you're staying on top of any makeup powders or any other sort of makeup that you have and any hair that gets on your counter. I don't know about you guys, but when I see one hair, even if it's mine, it's really disgusting. So I like to stay on top of the entire bathroom mess situation by either using a microfiber cloth and a little spritz of water to give it a quick wipe. Or if I'm in a pinch, I'll use some toilet paper, a tissue, or if I have one handy, a disposable cloth. When the warm weather hits and the sun starts streaming through your windows, one of the first things you might say to yourself, I know this happens to me, is, oh my gosh, my outdoor windows are disgusting. And there's a really quick fix for it. It just comes down to actually doing it. And that is, get yourself a double-sided squeegee, a bucket filled with hot water, a squirt of dish soap, and a cup of white vinegar. Dip your squeegee in there and use this fluffy side to apply all of the product onto the glass and then flip it around and use this blade to remove everything top to bottom, quick swipes. This whole job, whole job, takes about a minute per panel of glass and is so high impact. This tool is such a lifesaver when it comes to cleaning outdoor windows. We do have a video on this. I will link that for you down below. And I do want to mention for those of you who are inclined, I am not, 
Uh, you can also thread an extension pole into here and you can do your upper windows, again, if you're so inclined. But this tool makes your outdoor windows look phenomenal. I find it hard to function with dirty glasses. So rather than buying a fancy glasses cleaning kit, I'll use my simple electronics cleaner, water and rubbing alcohol, and one of these polishing cloths. They remove fingerprints, dirt, bacteria, makeup, all that kind of stuff with simple, quick wipes. Then I can put them back on and I can see clearly now. I did a little bit of research ahead of time to learn exactly how to break down the Mesa and I recommend that you do the same for whatever car seat you have. It will take you a little bit of time to familiarize yourself with your car seat so that way you can easily disassemble it for cleaning. But mine assembles and disassembles with these little clips that fit underneath the edge of the car seat so once I figured that part out I was golden. Essentially you want to remove everything right down to the straps and you want to leave any and all foam in place. Mine happens to be machine washable. Please read the fabric care label on yours and see if yours is. I'm using gentle detergent, a gentle cycle and cold water. I'm also not using any stain removers or any laundry additives here. Now to clean the straps because they can't be removed, I've got a bowl with some water, a little bit of laundry detergent in that smaller container, and a cleaning toothbrush, and of course, a microfiber cloth because you guys know I'm all about the microfiber. I use the toothbrush to scrub any of those areas. I know where Riley's chewing and drooling, so I know what I have to clean. She has also pooped on the straps. That's what I was smelling. So I give them a good little scrub, rinse them with the microfiber cloth, and then I look for any other areas around the car seat that need to be cleaned, including the interior, as well as this canopy over here. And I'm just scrubbing with the little toothbrush, rinsing with the water and the microfiber cloth. You can give the entire exterior a nice, good, thorough wipe down. I also wipe down the plastic parts because Riley honestly gets everything in her mouth. So I want to make sure it's C-L-E-A-N, if you know what I mean. Once the cycle was over for the components that were machine washable, I just took out my laundry drying rack and popped everything on there. I have done this so many times now and I can tell you these dry within hours. And that's good because, you know, I have places to go and people to see and a baby to take with me. And of course, you'll have to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. This will take you a little bit of time to figure out on your first go, but by your third or fourth time, you're gonna be a pro. Trust me, you build confidence with this stuff. If one of the things you love about this channel is all of the DIY products, well, of course, I'm going to include our DIY toilet bowl cleaner for you. This is a tried, tested, and true recipe. We love it, we use it. You need a good quality squeeze bottle. You can either reuse a condiment bottle or just pick up one of those plastic condiment bottles that you only use for toilet bowl cleaner and not ketchup. Either way, here's that recipe. One half cup baking soda, one half cup water, a quarter cup hydrogen peroxide, one quarter cup dish soap, and 15 drops of tea tree oil. You'll mix this all together in a bottle, shake it up, and then apply it into the toilet bowl, making sure you get under the rim, and of course, around the bowl. Let it sit for a moment or so, and then give it a good scrub and flush, and you're done. We've talked about cleaning your produce. We're all kind of acutely aware of how dirty a grocery store can be, but do we ever really think about cleaning our reusable bags? Probably not. I am answering my own questions here. <laughs> so if you are someone who kind of thinks about those reusable bags and where they've sat and perhaps how dirty they might be, an easy way to clean them using hydrogen peroxide is to throw them into the washing machine with regular detergent and add a cup of hydrogen peroxide to the bleach compartment. Because hydrogen peroxide is known to be an effective disinfectant, according to the CDC, that can kill viruses, bacteria, and other types of germs. So if you throw some of that in, you can reasonably expect that your bags will come out not only cleaner, but free of any of that nasty stuff. For this recipe, you'll need dish soap, 
white vinegar, essential oils if you feel like it, and a clean spray bottle. Start by adding one half cup of white vinegar, then add your essential oils, about 10 drops, and then one half cup of dish soap. Give it a quick shake and then take it to any soap scum infested areas. Give it a good spray with this product. Let it sit for a few minutes, scrub it well with a sponge, rinse it, dry it, and you'll see that soap scum is gone. When you talk to anybody about being efficient, they'll often tell you to take a big task and chunk it down. And the same thing goes for cleaning. Whenever I'm tackling an area, I don't look at the area as a whole. I look at it in smaller chunks. Then I focus on each chunk. I figure out exactly what needs to be done so that that area can look beautiful. I get to it. It allows me to be very efficient because I can be so laser focused and I don't get distracted by a larger space with lots of needs and it feels less overwhelming. So whenever you're cleaning a space, like I always say, divide your room into a clock, start at 12 and work your way around. Those little chunks make a big difference and help you clean more efficiently. To clean a tablet or a television, spray a glass and electronics cloth with some electronics cleaner and then you can wipe it down using the S pattern. And I like doing this with this particular cloth because it's great at removing fingerprints and bacteria so you get that nice glassy shine. For those of you that use a beauty blender, you are clearly Googling how to clean them. Now, I've used beauty blenders for years, and in fact, we made a video on how to clean a beauty blender years ago. But I'm just gonna give you a quick refresher. If you don't clean your beauty blender, over time, what ends up happening is the bacteria from your face, because you're dabbing the beauty blender on your face, your sponge is picking up bacteria from your skin and over time that'll sit there, it can fester and then when you use it again, you can redeposit that bacteria onto other parts of your face, which normally wouldn't be a big deal, but if you have acne bacteria, it's probably gonna cause outbreaks in other parts of your face. So what you wanna do is make sure that you're cleaning it every now and then. Frankly, you should be cleaning it after each use but I'll leave that to you to decide. There are a couple different ways you can approach it. You wanna use a gentle soap. People use all kinds of things from baby shampoo to Castile soap to hand soap. You do you. I would recommend using a gentler soap for me. I actually do prefer Castile soap. You apply a little bit on the palm of your hand. You can roll your brush around in it, get it, your sponge around in it, get it a little bit wet and start rubbing it under the sink. Another great tip that I've learned on how to clean your beauty blender is to throw it into a delicates bag and toss it into your wash. And that way it'll get nice and clean and it'll come out of the wash. And of course you don't need to dry it, just let it air dry. Our countertops in the bathroom, again, they're small little limited spaces. We don't have infinite space here, but things start to pile up because we just throw them on. I might use that, oh, I'll need that next Tuesday. And things just start to add up and become chaotic over time. So when you're looking at your bathroom, constantly prune out the products that you're not using. If you haven't used it in a while or ever, it means that it needs to either be tossed, donated, or given to someone who might have a better use for it than you do. Once you've gotten rid of all of the clutter, then you can actually wrangle it. One of the things I love to do is use a tray in my bathroom. I have a nice rectangular one and I put my products on there so that I can wrangle and organize it and keep all of the chaos to one small condensed space. So that way, at least if I'm gonna have a good collection of stuff, it's gotta stay in one little corner so the rest of my bathroom counter is somewhat sane. Glass cutting boards are pretty impervious to odors, but plastic and wood, you've been there, you know, they get smelly. And if you notice that your cutting board is smelly, it's telling you that there is some bacteria on that surface that needs to be dealt with. So a really easy way to deal with it is to use straight hydrogen peroxide, spray it on the surface, let it sit for five to 10 minutes. Then give your cutting board a good cleaning with soap and water, rinse it well and allow it to dry. The hydrogen peroxide used straight will definitely take care of that odor causing bacteria. And some people, what they will do so that they can just 
quickly access their bottle of hydrogen peroxide is they will remove the screw cap altogether and put on a spray bottle nozzle and leave that with their cleaning arsenal so that way you still get the benefit of the hydrogen peroxide in a brown bottle but you have it in a much easier to use application. This is a trick that I learned working at restaurants. If you have any silverware with water spots or that looks sort of dull and kind of not great, you can dip them in vinegar and then just use a polishing cloth like this one to remove the vinegar and reveal a beautiful shine. Now, this isn't something you're gonna do every day, but if you have guests coming over, it's a really quick, easy thing to do and it makes a difference. To freshen up your clothes between washes, to save yourself from having to do extra laundry, and to prolong the life of your clothing, I have a little secret tip for you. First, spritz your garment down with some DIY fabric refresher. I have a link to a video that we did on that very easy and effective recipe, which I will place for you down below. The next thing you want to do is place those garments, whether they're tops or pants, jeans, anything like that, not socks or underwear, and of course not if the clothing is stained, but if it is fairly clean, just needing a little bit of refreshing, into the dryer on the air only or the fluff cycle. Now you can run this through for about 10 or 15 minutes, and what that will do is breathe some new life into the clothing, just help freshen and perk it up a little bit. The clothes will look and feel better, and you've saved yourself a wash. There's a really good chance that if you have carpets at home, there are probably stains on them. And even those of us who try our absolute best, your dog's gonna barf on the carpet, you'll spill nail polish on the carpet, or someone, a guest, obviously never you, would drop a glass of wine on your carpet. Stains happen. And because I spend my whole life talking about cleaning, I actually made a video all about getting rid of carpet stains specifically, so I will link that for you down below. You can check that out as well. Now, a few best practices when it comes to getting rid of stains on your carpets. First and foremost, blot with a clean cloth or paper towel. Next, you want to make sure that you're not using too much product. People have this tendency to overuse because they think that will help get rid of the stain. In fact, if you use too much product, you're going to have like a ghost ring around your stain and that's going to be really hard to get rid of. The more product, the more suds, the more stickiness. So less is more when it comes to using this. And then I had one more point, but I'm going to have to ask Chad or Luke what it was because I totally forget. Guys? And that point was, always test your stain removal solution on an inconspicuous area first because if your stain is front and center and you use a stain removal product that might not be so friendly toward your carpet, you're gonna have a bigger problem on your hand than a little wine stain. Here's an outdoor job that is not gonna put a smile on your face while you're doing it, but will make you feel like a little bit of a better person inside after it's done and that is cleaning those garbage and recycling bins. They get disgusting, and that disgustingness is multiplied in warm weather. In fact, you with your garbage drippings and your garbage juices and the crusty garbage and all the stuff that's stuck inside of those bins will attract pests. And I'm not talking about pesky next door neighbors, I'm talking about four-legged, six-legged, 100-legged things that creep and crawl that you never wanna know exist. So all you have to do is clean those bins. I would recommend using gloves personally or asking Chad to do it, which is typically what I do. But put those gloves on, get yourself some dish soap. That's pretty much all you're gonna need to clean it. And then get yourself a good iron handle scrub brush and give the inside a good quality high elbow grease scrubbing. Then rinse it out and leave it in the sun to dry because when it's left in the sun to dry and it doesn't reek, nothing gross is gonna be attracted to it. The best product to use for this task is plain white vinegar. I'm just adding some to a clean spray bottle. And then I'm using an iron handle brush, just dry, and I'm brushing off all of the loose dirt and salt that's been ground into these car mats over those cold winter months. It's important to shake off your mat as well, that way none of the debris sits on there for the next step. Now I'm treating each of the car mats with the plain vinegar. Don't worry, you cannot overdose on this. 
and then you can rub it in again with that iron handle brush. This will help agitate further and lift out some dirt. And if you have to repeat it a few times, no big deal. Following that, I'm using a high pressure head on my garden hose to really get rid of any of the extra dirt or salt. You can even see some of the salt coming out of my mat. Then I'll put them in the sun to dry. For plastic car mats, I'm filling a bucket with water and adding a squirt of dish soap, maybe a tablespoon or so. Then I'm using that same iron handle brush just to give a good scrub down to those mats. I like the iron handle brush because it can really get into those cracks and crevices and you can give her while you're scrubbing. It's kind of like taking your car mats to the dentist for a good cleaning. Now I'm using that same high pressure hose to get rid of any of that soapy water or any of that grime. And a really good trick that I have to get any of those extra remnants up is to spritz the plastic car mats with some white vinegar. And once that is sprayed on, I'm just wiping it off with a microfiber cloth. This will help get rid of any extra salty stuff. For this, you'll need water, white vinegar, cornstarch, and a clean spray bottle. Add one tablespoon of cornstarch, one cup of white vinegar, and one cup of water to your spray bottle. Shake it well and make sure you shake it each time you use it. That way you disperse the cornstarch. Spray on glass, wipe it off, and you'll see streak free and nice and clean in no time. Many years ago, you might have seen a popular recipe going around Pinterest called the Dawn Miracle Cleaner. It was essentially two parts hydrogen peroxide, one part Dawn dish soap. Now it can be any dish soap, quite frankly, although Dawn does work really well, so do other dish soaps. The most important thing here is that you treat the stain the way you would treat any stain. So first you remove all the stain material first by scraping and blotting. You always wanna treat a dry stain. Then you can apply this stain remover product using a cleaning toothbrush, gently brush it in. You don't wanna overuse product because you're gonna to have to do more cleaning up afterward anyway. And then just have a clean cloth with water so that you can quickly blot and rinse that stain area. This is one of those areas that you would wanna test in an inconspicuous area first before you take it and remove a stain, say on a piece of clothing, on a sofa or on a carpet. Remind yourself that you don't have to clean all the things all the time. And we actually have made a couple of videos on this and I will link those down below for you. I think we called them, are you cleaning this too much or something along those lines. Either way, some people feel compelled that they have to clean everything every time they clean. And that's overwhelming and that takes a lot of time. So if you can really think about the tasks and those MIAs, those most important areas around your home that you need to focus on and then really hone in on the actual jobs that need to be done, you'll see that cleaning is a lot less daunting and you actually don't need to spend that much time doing the tasks especially if you're maintaining your home on a regular basis. There really is less to do when you attempt those bigger jobs. People are curious about how to clean white shoes. Now there are so many different iterations of what white shoe could mean. We could be talking about the soles of a shoe, which we want white. We could be talking about a canvas or a nylon shoe that could be white or we could be talking about a coveted white leather shoe. Either way, they all have different cleaning treatments, so here we go. If it's just the sole that you wanna get whiter, that's a simple fix. You can use a cleaning toothbrush, a little bit of dish soap and water. If you have quite a mess, you can use some white toothpaste without gel to clean the sole. You can use some dish soap on there. You can even use some baking soda. Then just rinse the sole nicely and you'll see that your old sole is actually gonna look much nicer and much fresher. Now, if you have a canvas or a nylon shoe, of course, make sure that you check your fabric care instructions first. And yes, shoes come with those. If you're not sure what to do for your specific shoe, you can always look that model up online and the manufacturer should tell you exactly how to clean the shoe. But generally speaking, you can machine wash these. So what you might wanna do is get yourself a delicates bag, put your shoes in the delicates bag, toss them in the washing machine, regular detergent, 
I prefer cold water and a gentle cycle. By the time they come out, you can either air dry them or take that same fabric laundry bag and hang it on the back of your dryer, close the dryer door, and then that way you don't have your shoes tossing around, but they'll still get the dryer effect. So that's another great thing that you can do to clean your nylon or your canvas shoes. Now let's say that you have shoes with leather uppers. You want to be very careful with those. You can clean the sole the same way we've already talked about, but you would want to use some sort of special leather product, a leather cleaning product to treat those specifically. And if you're obsessed with your sneakers, you know that there are products out there. That's something you're going to want to spend the money on, especially if you've invested in beautiful, crisp, clean white sneakers. And honestly, nothing looks better than a pair of crisp, clean white sneakers. Now, the final note I will make is your laces. If your laces are supposed to be white, but they kind of look muddy, dirty, very simple fix. Pull them out, throw them in that delicates bag, toss them in the wash with the rest of your whites, and they will come out looking brand, brand new. Another hack, you can soak them in oxygen bleach, give them a rinse, and hang them to dry. To understand how to make the three-wave system work for you, you have to think about a clock. Each room that you step into, you're essentially going to visualize as a clock and your entry point and your exit point is going to be 12 o'clock. Each hour of the room is going to be a section that you will then clean. All right, so we've got our working your way around the room visualized. We're thinking about each room as a clock and we know we're going to start at our entry slash exit point and work our way systematically around the room. The next thing you have to remember about cleaning is like everything else, because we live on planet Earth, everything falls from the top to the bottom. So dust, the number one culprit with cleaning, is always going to fall from the top to the bottom. That means when you do your cleaning in each section or hour of the room, you're always going to work your way from the top to the bottom. That way you never have to re-clean a surface. What a waste of time. It's also important that you have all of your products and tools in the room. You can find one central spot to keep them. I always recommend putting your products on some sort of surface that's absorbent like a towel. That way if anything leaks, it's not gonna get onto the actual surface that it's sitting on. By having everything very efficient and local, you're not running back and forth and around and wasting time finding a cleaning product or a tool that you need. Okay, so you're set up for success. Let's get into the first wave. So first wave always deals with tidying and organizing. Once you get that wave out of the way, then you can actually move on successfully to step two. So what does wave one look like? You start at the starting point of your room and you slowly work your way. You have no cleaning products in your hand. What I do recommend is having a garbage bag with you or a recycling bin, and you can also have some sort of basket. You can centralize all of this. That way, anything that you find that doesn't belong in the space can either be tossed in the garbage or the recycling or in the basket to be relocated somewhere else. You're gonna work your way around the room, top to bottom, section to section, and you're just gonna scan with your head moving up and down and anything you see that doesn't belong you're going to pluck and place where it needs to go and anything you see that's out of place you can quickly reorganize or tidy it now some people might not agree with me on this and they'll say well why am i organizing before i'm cleaning as far as i'm concerned when you're cleaning you should be lifting something moving it out of the way cleaning quickly and then replacing it if you do this work ahead of time it actually saves you time when you're cleaning okay so you're working your way around the room you've got laundry you've got stuff that doesn't belong there fine centralize all of it if for example you have laundry that belongs in that room before you finish wave two uh wave one and move on to wave two that would be a great time to fold that laundry and put it away if you're all done, take those bins and baskets, move them outside of the room and get back to your starting point because we're getting on to wave number two. Wave two is where the actual cleaning takes place. So if you ever wonder how a professional cleaner is so efficient, it's because they get rid of the clutter first so that they can actually see the forest for the trees. They know what they actually have to clean and they prep a space to be clean. And that is what wave two is all about. Now, what does cleaning actually mean? What are we trying to accomplish? Typically, we're trying to get rid of dust, dirt, we're trying to get anything, any surface shiny or streak free, and we're disinfecting where needed. So in a general space, like for example, this room, I know my goal. I wanna get it looking 
It's already tidy. I want to get it looking polished and fresh and clean and dust free. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. If you're in a different room that has different objectives, say a kitchen where there's a little bit more heavy duty work or dwell time that's required or a bathroom, you might have to pre-plan pre-treating some of those surfaces before you get started on your second wave. That way by the time you get to say the stove top, it's now been pre-treated for a few minutes so it's much easier to clean. This is another tip for you to bolster your efficiency. Some of the tools you might want to have near and dear when you're working on the second wave would be all-purpose cleaner, glass cleaner, appropriate microfiber cloth, so a glass and electronic cloth, or a general purpose cloth. Those would be really handy. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go back to your starting point and you're gonna start at your first hour, your first section. You're gonna nod your head in an up and down motion. This is what I always teach my staff. We say yes to cleaning. You're gonna start at the top, and work your way down to the bottom. And as you visually scan, you might see a scuff, you might see some dust, you might see something. And just going from top to bottom, you're just gonna quickly start moving. Wipe here, dust there, this, that. You're gonna take items off that need to be cleaned, spray the surface, give it a wipe down, pick up each item, wipe it, replace it, move on to your next section. It might sound like there's a lot to do during wave two, and there is, but once you get the pace and you start to become efficient, you will zoom around the room for that second wave. All right, you've earned it. We're gonna move on to wave number three. Get yourself back to the starting point of the room. And for this, you're not gonna need much aside from whatever cleaning tools and products you're gonna be using to clean the floors because that's where we're at. I don't expect that during your second wave you're dainty or careful about any of the dirt or dust that you're cleaning. Like, there's no sweeping it into your hand and throwing it into the garbage. We don't have time for that. You're gonna be a savage and throw everything on the floor because we deal with all of it in wave three. If you're vacuuming, sweeping, or mopping, I always recommend to start at the opposite corner to the entry point of the room. I'm gonna repeat that. The opposite corner to the entry point of the room. That way you can always clean your way out of the room instead of cleaning your way into a corner and then having to walk over your freshly cleaned floors. Whether it's vacuumed or mopped, nobody wants to do that. I mean, of course, you're gonna walk over that floor surface anyway, but the longer you can keep it clean and pristine, the better it feels. So if you're vacuuming, you can either use an extension cord and plug in on the outside of the door. That way you get a nice long cord and you don't have to worry about stopping your vacuuming, finding another plug and replugging it in somewhere else. You can just keep on going until you get out. And with a mop or a broom, clearly you don't have to worry about that. Either way, you're either gonna vacuum and then be done or vacuum slash sweep and then finish with your mopping. But once that's done, you are done your cleaning. My hope is that these 25 cleaning tips provided you with some motivation, inspiration, information, and other Asians. And that brings me to this week's common question, which is, would you rather cook or clean? I would rather cook any day. I'll take cooking any day. Let my husband deal with cleaning the pots and pans, please and thank you. But let me know your preferences in the comments down below. And if you want to find ways to elevate your cleaning performance, you can check out our Clean Like a Pro playlist where I take my experience as a cleaning business owner for the past 16 plus years and I compress everything into these amazing tips. A couple ways you can support the Clean My Space channel, you can subscribe and you can also check out makersclean.com, which is where we sell all of our premium microfiber cleaning tools. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.